the more we become conscious of where our consciousness is, the more we can tap the power of our consciousness. We always have consciousness, but we, are, we aren't always conscious of where our consciousness is. Our consciousness is our most undervalued resource. Whatever we do, learn, experience or enjoy, we all do it with our consciousness. We often try to get better things to do, to learn, to experience, to enjoy. But we hardly ever try to better the medium through which we experience all those things. That is our own consciousness. And that neglect often undermines our efforts for a fulfilling life. Suppose we have delicious food to eat. But if our consciousness is filled with resentment about something or someone, we won't be able to taste the food much, to enjoy the food much or even enjoy it at all in some cases. Unless we learn to focus our consciousness, we can't we can't experience or enjoy anything at all. The Bhagavad Gita urges us to become more consciousness conscious. In 626 it says, That wherever and whenever our mind wanders, and the mind is the primary channel through, through which our consciousness wanders about. So, Bring it back under the control of the self. Now, <clears throat> the first thing for having a more fulfilling life is that we need to become conscious of where our consciousness is and then get it to where we, where we want it to be. And this can, if we can do this, then we can tap the power of our consciousness more and we can enrich Every area of our life, if we study more, if we start, if we are, if we are attentive while studying, we can learn so much more in the same, in with the same investment of time. If we are more present in our relationships and our interactions with others, we can connect deeper with people and have more satisfying relationships. If we are more aware of the blessings that we do have in our lives instead of lamenting about the blessings, about the things we don't have, then we can be more content right now. The spiritual journey is also a journey of consciousness whereby first we become aware of where our consciousness is and then we find out what is the most enriching object for our consciousness and then direct our consciousness there through the most accessible pathways. Gita wisdom explains that the all attractive supreme Krishna is the most enriching object of consciousness and we can connect with him, we can direct our consciousness toward him through various channels, either directly devotional or indirectly by doing whatever we are doing with the purpose of expressing our loving service to him. And Bhakti Yoga is the time-tested process which provides us various channels toward uh, for the purpose of directing our consciousness toward Krishna. <coughs> if we learn to do bhakti practices not ritualistically but consciously, then 
if during the practice of bhakti we become conscious and direct our consciousness toward krishna then we will find that we can experience immense enrichment in fact we can ex- we can preview eternal ecstasy in the here and now thank you